In this video, I'm going to show you how I go from Viasat to Starlink. This is Dishy Generation 2, which is rectangular and self-aligns to the Starlink constellation. Once I receive the Dishy, I set it up in my yard so it could locate the Starlink constellation. This allowed me to discover which direction it would want to point and which sides of my house would be more optimal for the installation. As you can see, we've removed the Viasat equipment and returned that to them. We're going to be reusing the base mount that's left over after the return. The problem is, it doesn't exactly fit the Starlink satellite. I purchased this for another project and I have the aluminum pole left over. The great thing about it is, when the Viasat satellite goes into the aluminum pole, it's a match made in heaven. It's absolutely perfect. If you have to purchase anything to mount the Starlink dish on your home, I highly recommend you visit the Starlink store and purchase one of their certified mounts. I only did this because I have all these things lying around and I'm super cheap. The next thing was to route the cable into the mount. To protect the connector, I simply put it in a Ziploc bag and begin routing it through the mount. It was a little bit of a challenge because of the bolt that runs through the pole and you can kind of see it in this video but I have a little grabby tool, we use that, makes a few adjustments and able to get the cable all the way through. Now I'm doing this with a bunch of leftover things. You can see the carpet there, that's the cheapest carpet they sell at Home Depot. Um, and it's super snug. It probably will compress over time and may need to be replaced. So we're ready to install the Starlink satellite. The easiest thing to do is just simply lay it on its top upside down and then plug the connector in. I'm going to show you what the, the connector looks like just so you can see it. It looks kind of like a USB but it's very big and bulky and has waterproofing and those types of things built into it. Definitely proprietary. So you push it down in there and it makes a little click sound so you know you're good and then we just pick it up and slide it back down into that aluminum pole And there's that match made in heaven. It's so smooth, it's just perfect. It's completely stable, the satellite does not move at all. I intentionally positioned it the wrong direction because I thought it'd be cool to get a video of it moving and that was really hard because it doesn't do when you think it would. Next was cable management. Viasat left all these nice uh, coaxial cable managements. I just reused those. So the next thing was the Starlink router. This thing looks like it has lights on it. It doesn't. It doesn't light up at all. Only that pinhole in the middle has a light. The left is the network connection to the satellite. The right is simply a power cord. These are also waterproof, which is kind of interesting. It looks like a giant USB, but see how big this piece of plastic is? We have to cut this so we can route the wire through our home's conduit to get this to the network closet. And we'll talk about how we recouple this in a little bit. If we look at the network wire a little more closely, we notice it has the traditional four pairs that you see in common network cords. So this is the conduit that we have in our home to route network cables and such through. There was no way the plastic that is waterproofing around it was going to fit through this type of conduit. So we continue routing this wire through the various conduits that we have in the home. As I was routing it, I noticed a metal sheathing edge that was quite sharp. And when we go to couple the two back together and remove the plastic sheathing with just our simple wire cutter edge there, um, it's very thick aluminum foil. So we roll that back and it reveals that there's also, and you can't really see it with the camera, it's a clear plastic as well. And once we pull that back, it reveals a standard Cat5 cable with what appears to be a ground wire. I can only make an assumption that's what it is. I'm not sure. Next, I go ahead and add a RJ45 connection to the end, a male and a female. I had one of these lying around. Uh, there are other ways we'll talk about in just a second. Um, I use the configuration A that came on this bag and worked perfectly. On the other end, I use my crimp tool 
uh, to connect the satellite side of the connection. Now, it was a little bit of a challenge. I would guess that the cabling uh, gauge is a little bit larger than your traditional Cat5. I also left the ground wire out. Obviously, it doesn't play a role with the eight pins there, and we'll manually connect those so that that is uh, by the original design. Recoupling is quite easy. I haven't connected the ground wires yet in this particular shot. Um, but if you don't have all this stuff, don't go out and buy it. Buy this. You can recouple the network cable with this. It's very popular. It was on Reddit. Um, you just wire it together. But it doesn't allow you to extend the cable. So after 12 hours, we open the Viasat application on the phone. And it says that we will expect the interruptions every 13 minutes. And if you look at the little visual guide thing here, which is pretty cool, it shows you on the right side of the Viasat, it's having some issues tracking the satellites. So I double check that that's the only issue that it's really having and go outside and assess it. Looking at Dishy from the ground, I couldn't imagine what would be the problem. So let's investigate further on the roof. So in the visibility section of the app, there's this check for obstructions button you can use. It has these cool little green dots and allows you to look up, look around, and it collects all the green dots and it tells you whether or not it can actually see the sky. Mine's kind of obvious. It's this giant brick wall that's the problem. I'm too close to the home. So before I cut another hole in my roof, I get the default stand, I use some of that carpet and some zip ties and a piece of PVC to secure it to the roof temporarily. I don't want the $500 satellite dish falling to the ground. We weren't expecting any inclement weather, so it's pretty safe to do this. However, I moved the satellite farther away from the router, but because I had put an RJ45 connection on the satellite side of the cable, I was able to pull that cable back out and then just use this Cat6 cable that I had from Monoprice and here's the technical specs because I know someone somewhere is going to want to know what exactly it was. So there you go. So now the Starlink satellite has been moved over into its preferred position. The cable management has been updated and I ended up taking a carpet knife and just trimming the top of that carpet off uh, after I filmed this. So uh, I did actually scratch the top here of the satellite it's not actually like a hard plastic. It's like a white piece of film on top of a thicker piece of black plastic. It's not a hard plastic like the rest of the body. It can definitely be penetrated with something sharp, screwdriver, etc. So 12 hours later, we check the visibility inside the Starlink lab and there are no interruptions in coverage. You can see uh, there's really a big difference right there with the visibility it has as far as seeing the Starlink constellation. I don't really go into detail in this video about the price comparisons or the feature sets of Starlink. This video is primarily about mounting the dish on the network, but you should really do your comparisons and I think you'll find that Starlink is clearly the future leader of satellite internet. And if you like this video, subscribe. Maybe I'll make another video you like.